What's up, Mike? Right here. What's happening? I, you know, I had a... Can you tell I'm tan a little bit? Or is it just the lighting? I can't. Uh, you I can't, can, right? I got beach tan. Oh, the beach tan going on. Yeah, man. It was good. It was... Let me tell you something. It was... <laughs> Interesting enough, I come into the office, right? And I'm talking to the, the people that are in the office. I'm like, oh, how was your weekend? All This is all in Portuguese, by the way. How was your weekend? How was your weekend? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, I went to Praia do Padeira. And they're like, oh, we went to Praia do Padeira too. I'm like, I didn't see you there. Oh, no, we were on the boat. And I'm like, dang it, how did you? I saw the boats they pulled in. They pulled in from around, and it's like a cove, right? So they pull. Oh, yeah, they pulled in. You just see the video I sent you? I sent it to you personally. Yeah. yeah. It's so is that like that long hike down place you were talking about that y'all went one time before? No, this is a different place. <sighs> this is a different place, man. Dude, there's different so many beach you, you and all your beaches. <laughs> I have yeah, one beach you got, you know, yeah. sort of beaches and kill cliffs. Dude, wait, I can't wait until the borders open up so you can get over here. Seriously, you got it. I mean, it's just you and April. It's just it's a, it's an it's an amazing place. By the way, November. <clears throat> excuse me, I'll get the exact date for you, but November is the uh, I believe the grand opening, and I hope I really hope that the. Portuguese EU government opens it up for US citizens because I want you guys to be here, man. That'd be cool. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We're there. If we could get out of the country, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Get in the country. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. But you had a good weekend? Yeah, I did. Nice. I yeah. chilled out, cut the grass, did a couple things around the house. Cut the grass. Um, yeah, I know you don't really know a whole lot about that. <laughs> well, actually, you know, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I used to cut grass as a kid, but then I got an, uh, an, a grass allergy. Thank God I did, man. <laughs> Thank God I did. I you, you know, my kid, he has a grass cutting business, and oh, really? That is like he's like the entrepreneur or whatever. That he makes like. I was going to go to work for him one weekend. He's bringing really? out more money than I am sometimes. Really? Wow. That, well, that's good. He's doing well. He just started that recently? Uh, no, he started when he was like 15 with a push mower. Now he has a big zero turn mower that's better than mine. Wow. All kinds of equipment. He's got better equipment than I got. <laughs> Does, do you have like a, what do they call them? John Deere like tractor mowers or something? Yeah. One of these big old zero turn ones. See, I, I own the key pieces of uh, the uh, company, though. I own the truck and trailer. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was a smart investment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you know that Sarah ended up delegating her comping? Have you ever done that before? No, that's a very difficult thing to do. I know. Um, to find the right person. Mm -hmm. Apparently, she's found somebody that she thinks is good yeah i know comping is kind of like a unique thing because especially if uh you want you want someone to know like you know specifically market values they got to be a little bit of an analyst right and they have right. to know like compare apples to apples as we say in single family real estate but they gotta like you know there's there's different comparables to uh land do you want to touch on that a little bit because i know that keeps coming up quite a bit yeah, and see, that's the whole that's the whole tricky part about finding that right person to do that. Um, and I think it's great if she has found them because, you know, you you want to look at comparables. Land, unlike houses, you can go back further than six months. You can go back a year, two years. I've even went back three years sometimes mm. um, just to look at land values because they still can give you a pretty good idea. But um, you know, also I like to look at. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm copping the property. I'm looking at sold. Always look at what's for sale, too, because yeah. that's your competition. That's a good point. That's a good point because this came up recently, though. Uh, I forgot whose property it was, but it was a lakefront property. And then I think there was properties that were like 150000 and above, let's say, in that market. Um, and this property they had under contract for like less than fifty. I can't remember who exactly who this was. But I remember, the, it actually might have been Sarah, if not, it was someone else. But the reality is, is that what happens in that kind of situation? You have values that are like 100 and, let's just say there are over 100K in difference in, in price. Yeah, what, what, what happens in those kind of situations? 
Well, you got to look at the dates and you got to look at, you know, what, read those ads, read, try to find when you narrow down, you know, we just talked about how you want to try to go quick through your comps, but yeah. when you get the quirky ones like that, sometimes it's good to slow down and actually read those things. What's, why does this one say, is there something in the listing or something that says, well, like I'll give you a prime example mm. on lake lots. Okay. Some lake lots you get are great lots. They are awesome lots, but you can't put a dock. Mm. Well, that, that kills the deal. That's true. Whereas the next lot over, if you can put a dock, that dock alone may be worth thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, because dock. You know, actually, I have a friend who um, who bought a house and they have right of access to the dock. So they're like not not lakefront. They're the row behind it, but they get lakefront access. They got deeded access. Yeah, and that deeded access was worth for them twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, I was like, dang, just that little. I, and we're not talking like the lake. Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> little, <laughs> yeah, it's a little yeah. thing, you know. I was like, there you go. There's that. Uh, there's that extra access. Yeah, so it's a pretty. Uh, yeah, so it's, it makes it worth money. Um, so that's really good. Hey, Melanie, what's going on? Melanie's just saying hello. Good to hear from you. Hey, hey. Yeah, it's been a while, Melanie. It's been a while. Good to have you around. Yeah, where you been? Where you been? You've been like Mike <laughs> hanging out at the beach. <laughs> Okay, so we're talking about people's success. We're talking about Sarah. She's closing all these gobbles and gobbles of deals. Um, Adam has a deal. I don't know if you heard about this. I think you did, right? Adam's got a deal yeah. that he's working on. Okay, so that's fantastic. Uh, and Adam, if you're on, you could throw in some updates on that because I talked to Adam on Friday, but he said that he has, um, I think, two potential buyers. They're gonna come in and knock, you know, get get in through the gate and 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 get an offer in, and then also Donald has, I believe, two closings this week. I believe I thought one was today, but then it got pushed to Friday, so I think he's closing two this week. I'm telling you, the group today was like lit up like a Christmas tree, like Rockefeller Center. There was like, it was like a bunch of comments, a lot of activity going on. So it was, uh, it's, it's been pretty busy. I'm very happy for our members because I, you know, there's a tons, we're in industry. We know there's tons of programs out there and we've got a program that people are actually doing things mm -hmm. or being successful. That's not the case in every program that's out there. Oh, yeah, I think. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I mean, this is amazing. I, I mean, I, yeah. I get, I'm happier for them. I think that I am on my own deal. <laughs> I mean, cause it, because it's like, uh, you just see them growing Absolutely. and growing. You just talk about Sarah, you know, starting to farm out more things in their business. I know Don and I had a call the other day and he's talking about, you know, how to scale his business and things to do, man. I love when, when we were talking about creating the business, you know, a couple months ago, to now we're talking about how to scale it. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's very true. And one of the things I um, really like about this, I don't, know, I don't want to call it a newer model, but is our little groups, right? We have little, I call them focus groups, okay? So I, after seeing the need in the industry of like the one to many and, 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 and different things, I, I found that these little pockets, these little groups where it's not like 30 people in a group, it's not 50 people in a group, it's just, you know, maybe it could be five, could be 10. The reality is these small groups, more people get attention, more questions get answered. Um, and yeah, okay, I, I at first I would say I was a bit selfish, I will admit it. I was like, can we please do this on Messenger? <laughs> because I could send audios, you know, and it was just like easier and it was like a common thing. But, you know, I think everybody's really enjoying it. And even though we're using that platform, it seems to be working really fine. Sarah is yeah. saying you guys are the bomb, not just Mike, but she said you guys. That's both of us. Just so you know, <laughs> <laughs> Donald's saying we appreciate y'all. And Adam is saying they both went cold, not have not haven't bailed yet. Still lots of inquiries. Posting two more props adds tonight. That's great. Yeah. All right. Guess this is what it is. Keep it going. That's right. Keep uh -huh. it going. Don't let them stop. Don't don't stop until the deposit comes in, Mike. But I got a question for you. 
what happens? What would you do when the lead goes cold? I got a, I got a few thoughts myself on that. What, what would you do when the lead gets cold? I, you know, I try to reach out to them. You know, if it, if it seemed like it was a solid lead, but I also don't want to spend too much time. I don't waste. Uh, you know, I don't want to drag somebody there if I, and force them to try by only for them to fall out of the deal at the end. So I, I do try to find out because I'm I'm genuinely looking for feedback maybe they saw something on the property i didn't see that caused them not to like it um that's very helpful information to me Mm -hmm. Uh, so i do try to reach out to them a couple times but you know i don't you know chase i I don't stalk them they can't get a stalking charge on here (laughs) it's amazing you know the type of buyers you get and talking with them and and all that I, i mean i you learn a lot about people sometimes that's so just true. Talk them. um but yeah i mean I, i'm glad to see uh i'm glad to see every everybody doing good and i do like our platforming you talked about you know it's not 30 people on on a on a thing chat or whatever call or whatever it's five six seven eight people ten people it gives everybody an opportunity to have a voice yeah exactly because I've been on those big group calls and uh, you're nothing but a you know, spectator in audience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you're not doing anything in it. Um, so I think it does. And I think it, it, it's, it breeds a little bit of, um, maybe competition or accountability. Yeah. Also, yeah. I like that aspect of it because believe it or not, it keeps me in check too. Yeah. Um, I, I get lazy in the summertime, obviously. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it keeps me, I like, you know, I, I it's there. I'm about ready to send Sarah resumes if I get work with Sarah. <laughs> Sarah's gonna have offers in the mail, and it's not gonna be for property. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, you know, there there's stuff you know that that it, it keeps me. It's like, wow, I gotta I gotta step my game up. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's good. I did, sell, I did sell a piece of property while I was at the beach, though. Of course you did. I mean, you the same lady. To my same famous oh my buyer. Oh goodness! I won't go back next week to sell another piece of property. <laughs> Do you, let me ask you a question. Do you think it's because of like you're more? Is it more you're more calm, laid back at the beach? You're just like yeah, yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I think we just connect. She's an older lady. Yeah. And you know how you just connect with some people. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And she told me. She says, you know. I just, I don't, she said, I've looked at other things, um, and I just don't trust other people. I trust you. That's good. And, and because I told her, uh, she was trying to buy a lot that I didn't want her to buy, and I finally got her talked out of not buying it. Mm-hmm. I, I know that makes no sense. <laughs> well, you got a lot, but it, it wasn't for her. Yeah. And I didn't want her to get burnt on a lot when she's buying multiple properties. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so she, she's going for the other lot, uh, which is good. Um, so yeah, I'm happy. That's good. That's good stuff. Um, oh, by the way, so yeah, Donald, Donald is closing on two properties, by the way. I know I wasn't sure if it was one or two, but I'm reading back to his notes. So he's got two closing. Um, and he's also going to be working with slide broadcast. I know this has come up. It even came up on last week's uh, video call. Um, we talked about slide broadcast and using that in the business. What would you say, how important it is to follow up with, uh, and buyers, sellers, or even people that we've had prop offers on properties before. I know that's kind of a loaded question, so pick apart it as you wish. But what about follow up on deals? I think follow up is very important. Um, you know, determine when you want to. Everybody's got their own opinion. Uh, you know, it's it's there's nothing cornered in the market that says one time frame works better than the other. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to do it in six week follow up, if you want to do it in a one week follow up, whatever, follow up with follow up with buyers, follow up with, you know, also another thing is mm. your sellers. Don't forget about your sellers. You know, we get six month contracts on property. Yeah. Don't go five months and not talk to your sellers. That's important. That's an important part. It's huge yeah. because Number one, you may find out they don't own the property when you go to close <laughs> them because some other investors done went in there and bought it. Mm. Um, but no, keep them in the loop. And and I do what well, I'm an email person, so yeah. I try to get their email and just send them something out. I, yeah. I don't. I'd rather do that than be on the phone with them. Yeah. Uh, but just definitely keep them in the loop. 
keep them engaged. I mean, you can ask them on something about the property, even if it's something, you know, does it have, you know, uh, city or county water? You may already know that. Uh, ask them, so, well, do you know if the tap's in place or mm -hmm. not? You know, just something to engage them. Yeah. Um, let them know that you are working on the property. Back here to Donald, where he said, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Donald first said he has one closing this week, another one next week, and another one after. That's like almost one a week. <laughs> it's supposed to be two closings. I'll send you a resume too, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> but one, but one uh, got pushed back due to missing trust stocks. Okay, one question I had, Donald, is asking, what approach do y'all take to selling HOA properties? Sarah got me thinking she has the ultimate HOA property selling blueprint. Mike, I have to agree with Donald on this. Sarah is just like hot in the HOA. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should have <laughs> Sarah on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, get ready. You're going to be on the show next week. <laughs> well, you know, the key thing to remember on HOA properties, you know, when you say my property is an HOA, I, I'm programmed because I've just been, you know, I've been doing this since the beginning of time, but I'm programmed, you know, okay, covenants and restrictions. What's your HOA dues? Yeah. Those are two things that are just going to yeah. blab out of my mouth. Right. If it's a, if it's a gated neighborhood, what's the code? How do I get in? You know, do I have to scale a fence? Can I go through a code? Or, <laughs> yes, you know, how, how do I get in? You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, is it, is it a man gate? You know, stuff like that. Those are, do I have to things. dig a tunnel? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take a helicopter. Take down, a helicopter. Yeah. No, those are key things that you need to be thinking of. Yeah. When you're talking about HOAs, I, I know for me, and I, and I have nothing to take away from Sarah because she has really got it, got it on. But you know, for me, it's it's you know, I always say I always get a copy of covenants and restrictions and tell them they're available upon request. Um, Depending on your platform, you may be able to post it on there um, and things like that. You know, get somebody to call me if they want to code and things like that. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Where has the majority of your properties been, your buyers have come from? The ones that have closed, the ones that have closed, where have they come from? Do you remember, have you tracked where the leads came from? That's an important. That's, that's that's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. Because if if let's say Zillow, I'm selling my ads more or selling my properties more on Zillow. Wherever I'm selling my properties the most at is probably the place I'm gonna list it first. Absolutely. To get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's where you're gonna list it first. It's where you're gonna pay the most attention to, right? I mean, think about changing the headline, making the headline better. Maybe you know tweaking the ads a little bit, maybe getting another account. I've seen people yep. do that, but just be careful with that because I know that came up like, I don't know, three months ago, four months ago where we were, t it was a, in our group chat, there was everybody talking about, oh, what if I set up two accounts or three accounts? And I was like, yeah, just be careful, careful. <laughs> because those pictures, yeah, it'll come back to bite you. So just be careful with that, especially Facebook marketplace and setting up multiple accounts. It's a little tricky. So Sarah, re sales. Yeah, Sarah yeah. replied three Zillow, three neighbor letters, one Facebook. Now, isn't that funny? Because Sarah being the queen of the HOAs, three came from Zillow. What does that tell you? Right? Yep. If you got HOA properties, retail, that's where it's got. Now, <laughs> Donald has all Zillow too. Whoa, all of them on Zillow. That's interesting. Another thing's interesting, though. I, you know, I, I, I was damaged in college when it comes to stats. <laughs> um, I really was. So, you know, when you say, well, I sold most here. Okay, but I want to know every place you had it. That's true. Like, if you only had it one place, obviously that's going to be your <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I only put them on Zillow. <laughs> yeah. Don't let me get on my soapbox on, on numbers. It's so true. Numbers and stuff. But um, I tell you, Sarah brings up another thing that we don't talk about a lot, but it's vitally important, and that's neighbor letters. Yeah, she sold as many on neighbor letters three on neighbor as letters. she has yeah. on Zillow. That's very true. That's very true. Very interesting, too, because neighbor letters. And hey, wait, hold on. 
Interesting enough, let's go a little deeper. Zillow, three. Neighbor Letters, three. Donald has them all on Zillow. And by the way, Donald, you post yours on Facebook Marketplace too, right? Interesting enough, doesn't Facebook take the most time? I mean, if you really think about it. To, to list? Not to list, to manage. To manage, yes. To manage, absolutely. To manage. Sarah says, HOAs, one Facebook, two Zillow, one neighbor letter. Wait, what just there changed? Comes Donald coming back with the Facebook stuff there. Two upcoming closing from Facebook. Interesting. Interesting. Donald has interesting deals, though. <laughs> I must say, I, I, I'm interested in, in Sarah, Adam, Donald, all you guys. Yeah. Are you also, are you also doing Craigslist ads? Yeah. So is anybody doing is Craigslist? That part of that play? Do you post you know, on Craigslist? Do y'all post? I'm gonna talk like Donald. Do y'all like Donald and Mike? Y'all. <laughs> oh, and Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam, do y'all yeah. post? Hey, the only time I used to say y'all is when I lived in North Carolina. I was like, "Hey, y'all doing?" <laughs> With my tater tots and my cornbread. <laughs> oh my god, I miss it. I miss it. Um, but yeah, do do does y'all do y'all post on Craigslist? Yeah, right after I get finished plowing the field. <laughs> 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 Donald says nice. Facebook is time consuming, but I've noticed that if you give the buyer your phone number on Facebook, they'll more likely to call and try to buy. That's interesting. Interesting. Um, now, Sarah just started Craigslist. She just started yeah. Craigslist last last week, last month, I, last year. I'll I'll be honest. <clears throat> I, for what I, I used to do better on Craigslist than I have here Me recently. Me too. But part of that's my fault too, because I'm lax about. I I took back. I had somebody doing. I I got to give it back to okay. somebody having somebody update it. Um, because I I suck at updating. You know, pulling it down, putting it back on. I could give I just, you my girl. I could give you my yeah, girl. She's I really give good. It back to my VA. Those were some good stuff there. We we that that was a mix all over the board though, right, Mike? What do you think about that? That was like yeah. Mm -hmm. Just it shows you got to post everywhere. Yeah. You don't know where your buyer's coming from. Yeah. Definitely heard a lot of Zillow, Facebook, Zillow. Um, yeah. Craigslist, and interesting enough, I, I actually personally found more, like I, I think everybody knows my story that I can't even post on Marketplace personally, but the uh, the reality is I, I leaned in hard to Craigslist uh, because of that and um, and got, you know, you know, a VA in the United States to make sure they're posting and reposting Monday, Wednesday, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <clears throat> and it worked out really well. Uh, all right. Lastly, Adam says Zillow 53 views, one save. What a make of that. What, what you make of that? That's low. Well, I, I, you know, it goes back to how long you had it on Zillow. Okay, um, yeah, how many days? But that's low numbers. That's not one yeah, day, is it? Low numbers. Yeah, it's those very are low, low numbers. It's, it's low numbers. I tell you, Adam, what I would do is is just on your Zillow one, change up the the main picture or something. Maybe tweak. Maybe drop it by two hundred dollars or something. Mm. Something minimal, just to see what happens. Yeah. See if that changes your views. Round your round your numbers down to nine hundred or five hundred. Like if you don't put like whatever the I don't know what the exact number is, but like forty five thousand dollars. Put it like forty three nine hundred. Right. Round your numbers down um, to the nearest nine hundred. Okay, he said two weeks. That those are low numbers. Yeah, yeah those yeah. are low numbers. Yeah. Um, Sarah says I figured out my exact numbers. I've sold two unrestricted properties, both with neighbor letters. I've sold five HOA properties, three Zillow, two neighbor letters, one Facebook. Zillow is your best friend. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Right now. Exactly. You're like neck and neck. I like how Sarah is so organized that she does have her numbers though. She brought that up, and and you know what's interesting. This is something she's not good at. I believe she's told me multiple times, but it's interesting how well she knows the numbers because she's not, she's put attention to it, which is, which I find really interesting um, because it's something I know she's brought up multiple times and, uh, but she says she's getting better at it, which is awesome. I agree with you. I'm right on board with you, Sarah. I'm not, you know, details like that fly right over me. Go ahead. 
successful folks know their numbers most Very of true. them. Most of them. Uh, most of them. Yeah, <laughs> you got those exceptions. <laughs> no, I mean, but you know, you got a good idea. You know, so somebody asked me, or, or my wife asked me the other day, how good's the company doing? I know how well my company's doing, mm -hmm. right? Because I talked to my accountant the other day. Yeah, but I know, I you know, I I know got where know we numbers. are, and, and you know, that's important to know. I, I got to know if I'm I'm making money or not. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, and, and just just to kind of wrap that up, um, guys, if you don't, and, and depending on where you're at in your business, we're talking about metrics. We could we could do a whole call on this, you know, whole training on this. This is you know a call. What am I talking about? I'm still stuck in like 1999 saying we could do a call on this. Um, <laughs> we could do a whole training on this, but the reality is knowing your numbers when it comes to marketing very important. What's going out? What's coming in? Um, all, all very important. Another thing too is on the accounting side is bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, very important. Last call, Sarah says, once I got to the end of my work in one county, I went back and figured out my numbers. In the middle of the work, I was totally lost. Okay, last but not least. <laughs> Adam <laughs> says, <laughs> I was quite wrong, Zillow stats. Throw it in there, Adam, and we'll call it a day. Drum roll. <laughs> drum roll. We got a drum roll. Sarah, thanks so much for sharing that. Really appreciate it. And by the way, while Adam's posting in his Zillow stats, thanks everyone for joining in today and uh, yeah. contributing to the call. Uh, the call. Contributing to our, our live chat. I think we went through some good, cool things too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and Adam looks like he's going to leave us hanging. And Adam, no, yeah. <laughs> All right. In the past four days, 299 views and 17 saves. My admin gave me bogus info. My admin? Your admin gave you, what your admin gave you, um, Adam, was one day's views. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day's views. Yeah. So you got to go to the public. Click on the public thing so you can see all, all views of it. total. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Four days to earn nine. That's, that's pretty dang bad. good. That's that's not bad at all. Seventeen saves. Yeah, that's not yeah. bad at all. One of those is mine. Yeah, so everything <laughs> we talked smack about your property earlier, Adam. Yeah, we take it back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we take it all back. <laughs> We're like, oh, Adam, oh, that's bad. No, but literally, if those were real numbers, those won't be too good. But these are good numbers. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, that's... 17 saves is hot. That's really good in two days, in four days. That's that's huge. Because, if, and again, even now, if you tweak that by just $100, a couple hundred dollars, those 17 people's getting an email. Hey, he's done a price drop. Exactly. That's an important part. You do a price drop, they all get notified. Right? And uh, just just a little reference, guys. A little mark. We, we got to close it up here. Just a little marketing reference. Drop your price when every Eastern time when everybody is sleeping. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, That's cool. yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> Zillow does an automatic email. Okay, when these price drops happen, when people wake up in the morning, the first thing they check is pretty much their email or messages. Okay. And when you get them hit in the morning, it's a better it's a better response rate most of the time. You could go on, you could go check this out for yourself. But morning emails tend to work better in people's minds um, when they're out in the morning and not so much at night. Fresh, fresh, exactly, fresh in people's minds. If you want, you can definitely go check that out online. Check out stats from you know marketing websites or whatever. But it, it works better. So try you know updating at night. Uh, the previous night. Ah, yes, much better. Notifications, nice, Adam says. Very good. Great, great. Sounds good. Fantastic. Mike, it's been great. It is, it has been great. It's been a great weekend, great week. We got a bunch closing this week. It's fantastic. Awesome. Good stuff, all right. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining in. We'll yeah. see you next time. Stay active. <laughs> <laughs>